Well, hi everybody, it's Brody again. It's episode three of Brody's Garage. I am back in Las Vegas. I did my show in Long Beach. The show actually went amazingly well, despite me only getting about four hours combined sleep. I finished up getting the car in the garage. Uh, what was it? Uh, Saturday morning, I guess it was about 2 a.m. I finally went inside. Knew that I had to get up early, couldn't sleep. Just major anxiety, just, you, you, I don't know about you, but when you know that you gotta get up in four hours, I can't fall asleep. So I might've fallen asleep maybe an hour before I had to wake up. And then I got to Long Beach that morning, checked into the hotel, managed to convince my tour manager to let me take a nap. <laughs> I cut into rehearsal um, about halfway through and we, we pulled off the show. I thought it went pretty well actually. So I got back yesterday, uh, which was Sunday. And the first thing I did was I got out my floor jack and a pry bar and I managed to get underneath the wooden pallet enough to get this thing up into the air. And as you can see there, the car is now sitting, uh, you know, a couple feet off the ground, but we still have a wooden pallet underneath it that's bolted to the car. There was no way to get really between the pallet and the car to separate them. So I just kind of put the whole thing up in the air and then my plan is to mount the rotisserie and then once that's balanced and mounted, I will, you know, basically drop the pallet out from underneath it. I might have to actually cut it out to get it out in segments. I'm not sure. So I just got back from a little run to Home Depot. Funny thing about it is when you've been out of the auto industry for such a long time, you sell off all your tools, you think, well, I'll never need that again. So this is now the second time I'm buying a lot of things, uh, wrenches, sockets, a drill press, um, air tools that I used to have all this stuff, but I've, I've gotten rid of it years ago and well, I'm buying it again. So anyhow, my first order of business is to work on these brackets here. These came with the red line stands rotisserie and there's a complete video that the owner of Redline Stands does on his 67 Nobits. The whole reason that I found Redline Stands in the first place, I was searching for stuff on YouTube for 67 Nova and I think I typed in rotisserie. The guy's video came up and he shows you how to do this whole exact process. I'm gonna have to make a couple of slight adjustments. Um, I'm pretty much gonna do it the way he did it here in the front. These brackets here are gonna bolt on to where the front original subframe mounts, these four holes here on both sides. And I gotta do a little trimming um, there's a little corner here that has to be trimmed off of this bracket. And then I've got to mark my holes on the back side and drill out the holes to mount these. Pretty straightforward in the front. On the back side, it's going to be a little trickier. And by the way, I never really get to talk about the, the uh, Detroit Speed Mini Tubs that um, Real Deal Steel welded in for me. So I ordered my car with a couple different options. First and foremost, the uh, the wider wheel tubs here to accommodate a much wider tire. And there's the tire that I'm running. We talked about it in episode one. It's a Mickey Thompson ET Street 305-3518. It's a bad boy. And I'm really excited to get it up underneath the wheel well and make sure that it fits. A couple of preliminary measurements say that it will. Anyway, that's the look of the widened wheel tub inside the 67 Nova. And a little shot from the back here. There they are. Driver's side, passenger side. Now today was the first time I really popped open the deck lid and kind of looked inside here. Um, still not quite sure why this wasn't bolted on when I got the car, but I think it might have something to do with the fact that they, and I, I did go to the Detroit Speed uh, website and you do in fact have to clearance the trunk hinge here uh, to clear it. However, I'm not exactly sure why this wheel well has been indented. Looks like they took a little bit of massaging uh, and took a hammer to it maybe and pushed it in. Probably because back here, and I don't know if you can see this, but this is where the trunk torsion rods connect to. They go through, I think, one of these three slots and into there. And for sure that is still actually barely rubbing. So I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do about that. Maybe I can trim some more off the, the bracket or maybe I need to clearance this wheel well a little bit more. At any rate, that's another, another day and another time, but uh, the passenger side seems to be fine. Now then, for the rotisserie brackets back here, 
Gonna do it a little bit differently because the way that Ian mounted his was to the, where the shackles go for the original monoleaf springs. And I kind of glanced at this before I headed out to Long Beach and I thought, oh, I better get some bushings because this here is like a giant hole. It's like at least, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half diameter. So I ordered some bushings from Summit, which by the way, Summit Racing and my guy uh, Cameron over there have really been doing a great job hooking me up. Uh, parts have ordered, uh, have showed up quickly, um, partly because I'm not far from their, I think they've got a warehouse in Reno and I'm in Vegas. So uh, most of the time I get stuff, if it's in stock, I get it within a day or two. And I just want to give a shout out to Cameron and the guys at Summit Racing. Uh, anyway, I got these bushings ordered as I was literally on the plane to Long Beach. And when I came back today from Home Depot, they were waiting on the porch. So thank you. Now then, having said all that, these are the brackets that come with the Redline Stands rotisserie. This is sort of the default one. And you would love to be able to just take this and stick it up there. But it's too narrow to fit around those two bushings there. I got about another half inch on either side to make that fit. Now I could do two things. I could do one of two things. I could cut off the ends of those bushings, which would shave me a, a half inch off either side, but I really don't intend to keep these bushings. They're brand new bushings. I'm only using them to mount the rotisserie. And then when I'm done, as far as I'm concerned, I can sell them, probably get my money back. They're almost a hundred bucks for the set. Or I've got to modify these brackets um, so to get that extra clearance, you know, I could either try to get a torch out and heat these up and bend them out and then back over, or maybe I'll cut them off and weld them out a little bit further. Either way, I've got to come up with a solution for these brackets. They did ship with some extra, uh, flanges and pieces here that I can, I can mock something up, but I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do or what I want to do yet. So I'm either going to sacrifice those bushings or do some cutting and welding. Okay. Well, I will uh, pick up when I decide, and then when I get a little bit further along with this, we'll, uh, we'll check back with you. All right, I sort of mocked up my flange. I did a little notch there to clear this part right there, kind of cut into that. So I did a little angle grinder clearancing there, clamped it on, and now I'm gonna spray paint the back side of these holes to mark the location for drilling. So here we go. I'm gonna do this one-handed while holding the phone. All right, let's see what we do here. Spray painted my clamp and everything. Oh man. Okay, now I'm gonna have to do this left handed. Left handed, even. Where are you? Back there. Okay. And one more. Did we get that? All right, I hope so. There's my spray painted markings, and I kind of guessed on the center punching there. I got pretty close, but you know what? I'm gonna kind of slot the holes just a little bit big so that I get a little bit of wiggle room. All right, well, I just got back from a quick trip to the machine shop to check in on things. Came back and I assembled my brand new drill press, which I bought for the second time now. And I got my first bracket mounted. I drilled out the holes and uh, things lined up pretty well. I only had to slightly enlarge one hole, so I, I got it pretty good the first try. Got this first bracket bolted on. I'm gonna go eat dinner, come back, get the second one on tonight, and then I will figure out what to do with the leaf spring brackets. One thing I can tell right away is I need to get a bigger vise. This just sucks. Well, I managed to get both of the front brackets mounted to the firewall for the rotisserie. That's probably all I'm gonna get done tonight. And it is October 25th. So this probably concludes episode three. See you next time. All right, maybe I'm not quite done. I uh, debated about talking about this, but I've decided that I'm gonna talk about it because I feel it was important and it was a, a big part of my day today. Um, in between running errands and working on the car, I, I happened to call the machine shop where I had dropped off my engine block and crank and all that stuff um, about 10 days ago. When I dropped it off, one of the employees, one of the machinists came out and helped me move all the stuff in and very nice guy. And he says, well, I can't really write you up a proper estimate until the owner gets back in and he's out um, 
for a few days and won't be back in until next week. I said, that's fine, no problem. So I had left and a while later, uh, about a week later, I called the machine shop and I said, hey, this is Brody. I said, is this so-and-so, the name of the owner? And he goes, yeah, this is me. I was like, wow, okay. Um, well, anyway, my name's Brody and I, I dropped off my stuff about a week ago. And before I could say another word, he cut me off. And he goes, well, it wasn't a week ago because I just got in and I saw the ticket on the counter here. And I'm like, okay, well, you know what? It wasn't maybe a week ago, but it was like six days ago. He's like, well, anyway, what do you want? And I'm like, damn. I said, um, your, your worker had said that when you got back in, we could write up an estimate for the order. He's like, well, hang on a minute. Uh, and he gets off the phone and I'm just like, holy crap. So he comes back on, he goes, well, I'm not going to know anything for a few more days. So give me till Monday and then I'll, uh, I'll have an estimate for you. I'll know more by then. I'm like, all right, fine. So that was four days ago. Today's Monday. And while I'm out running errands, I decided to give him a call because I had realized that I had purchased a second set of piston rings, and I didn't know at the time that the pistons I ordered came with a set of rings. So I have an extra set, and I wanted to go down and get them so I could send them back and get a refund on them. So I call the machine shop, and I say, uh, hi, is this so-and-so? And he goes, yeah. And I don't know what's going on in this guy's life, but you can just tell he was just angry, and he's been angry. Um, so I said, Hey, uh, it's Brody again with the LS3, and uh, I guess I'm calling for two reasons. One, uh, to see if you have an update for me. He goes, well, we're probably in the same place we were last time we talked. Okay. And I said, well, the other reason is I have an extra set of piston rings. I didn't realize it, but I brought them down there, and I'd like to come get them. Can you check and see if there's a box of piston rings? You might, Hang on. Comes back. Yeah, there's some piston rings here. I'm like... Okay, great. Well, you know, sorry if I bothered you, but you did tell me that, you know, Monday you might have an update for me. Well, you know, if you're going to call me every day and bug me, I'm like, dude, this isn't every day. This is twice I've called. You know what? I'm not going to argue with you. Come get your stuff and get out of here. Hangs up on me. I had to take pause. I had to take a few deep breaths and kind of go, like it was, my blood was already like up to here. And I came home and I kind of cooled down a little bit. I thought about, well, you know, should I go down there and just get my shit and get out of there and leave this guy like a nasty review online? And I kind of stewed on it a while, and then I kind of prayed on it a while. And I don't mean to be overly religious, but once in a while, when I can't really figure something out, I kind of ask the universe what I should do. And I kind of thought about it hard, and I decided I was going to go down there. And if nothing else, um, worst case scenario is I will gather my stuff up peacefully, and I will load it in my car, and I'll say, all right, I guess it didn't work out. Sorry to bother you. And then I thought, well, maybe the good side is maybe I can maybe I can de-escalate this somehow, and I can calm this guy down, and we can work it out. And I really thought about it the whole way down there, and I got there and kind of took another deep breath, and I walked in there, and I just decided to smile, and I said, hi, I'm Brody. And he kind of changed his whole expression. He's like, oh, okay. Uh, and I walked up and I said, uh, you want me to leave? And he's like, well, let's talk about it. And I said, okay. And uh, he said, I think we might have had some miscommunication. And I said, okay. And I reached out my hand and I shook his hand and said, I'd, I'd like just to be able to continue this. Let's Let's keep going with this. Let's let's see this thing through. What do you say? And he's like, okay. And we chatted and he kind of gave me his whole backstory. And I had learned that he had a family, uh, he had a family crisis over the weekend. And I'm sure he was upset about that. So the, the reason I'm telling you all this is because I'm sensing a lot of people have gone through a lot in the last year and that you just never know what people are, uh, are dealing with in their personal lives. So uh, treat each other kind, be patient. And when you see somebody that's mad, take a second to think, is there a way that I can make this better without escalating the situation today? Luckily, it worked for me. And I'm not gonna name names, but 
I'm really happy about the way things went and it kind of like made my whole rest of the day. So that's my final thought for episode three. I will uh, see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see how this all turns out. All right, see you then.